Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Now, in previous videos, we've spoken about how we can either stimulate or inhibit a neuron from sending a signal. We've spoken about how a neuron can actually send that signal, that electrical impulse, down its long axon. We call that an action potential. And now what we're gonna talk about is what happens once that action potential has reached the very end of the neuron, okay? The synaptic terminal. So what's happened, just a very quickly recap, is remember, positive sodium was rushing into the cells via these sodium, voltage-gated sodium channels. When the positive sodium enters the neuron, it makes that area of the neuron positive. Now remember, at rest, a neuron has a charge difference from inside compared to outside. It's negative 70 millivolts inside compared to outside. Once the positive sodium moves in, it, it brings that charge up from negative 70 to negative 65 to negative 60, and then when it hits negative 55, that's the threshold to open up all of these voltage-gated sodium channels. So with this sodium coming in, it makes it negative 55, it flips its lid, the next sodium comes in and makes this area negative 55 as well. Remember, so much sodium comes in that once it hits negative 55, all the voltage-gated sodium channels open up, all the positive sodium comes in and it makes it extremely positive in that area of the neuron. So what's happened now is all the sodium channels have opened up and we're at the end of the neuron. It becomes so positive here at the end of the neuron that it stimulates a different type of voltage-gated channel. It stimulates a, cal a voltage-gated calcium channel. And so they start to flip their lids and open up. We've got all this calcium outside. Calcium rushes into the cell. Now calcium is positively charged as well. And what calcium does when it enters the synaptic terminals, the very ends of neurons, it stimulates these little things here, which are called vesicles. So they're plasma membranes with neurotransmitters inside, and it stimulates them to start moving their way towards the plasma membrane. They will fuse with the plasma membrane and release their contents, which will be neurotransmitters. Now, if they are excitatory neurotransmitters, like glutamate, for example, they will cross or diffuse that synaptic cleft. They will bind to their receptors on the next neuron. This is the presynaptic neuron, the, the neuron pre or before the synapse. This is the postsynaptic neuron. This neurotransmitter will bind to its receptor. The receptor will open up a channel and allow for sodium to enter the neuron making it positive inside this neuron. Again, remember, it's negative 70, but all this positive sodium coming in, it makes it positive. If it hits negative 55, it then opens up the voltage-gated sodium channel and sodium comes in, and then the whole action potential begins again. So what you get is an electrical signal, then a chemical signal, then an electrical signal again. And that's if you have a stimulatory neurotransmitter. If you have an inhibitory neurotransmitter, it's not gonna open sodium channels. It may open up chloride channels and negative chloride goes in. If negative chloride goes in, it makes it not positive, but even more negative inside and stops an electrical signal from being sent. Because remember, it needs to go from negative 70 to negative 55. If you put more negative things in, it'll go from negative 70 maybe down to negative 75, negative 80, negative 85, negative 90. So that's hyperpolarization, stopping a neuron from sending a signal, okay? So what are the phases of synaptic transmission? You have the action potential coming in with voltage-gated sodium channels. Enough sodium goes in that it stimulates voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium comes in. This stimulates these vesicles that contain neurotransmitters to fuse with the membrane and release their contents. The neurotransmitters will diffuse across the synapse and bind to their uh, receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. If it's excitatory, it'll open up sodium channels for sodium to come in, and that stimulates the action potential again. Now this is for a neuron. Sometimes this neuron is gonna synapse with an organ. Sometimes it's gonna synapse with a muscle. If it synapses with a muscle, that's called the neuromuscular junction. I'll do an entire video series on that. And the neurotransmitter it releases is acetylcholine, okay? So all muscles need acetylcholine to stimulate it, to open up sodium channels, to stimulate the action potential for muscles to contract. So that's synaptic transmission.